Hi, I'm Warwick from Hotter and Steenbeck, and today we're going to make a video that's following up on our Need to Know Basic series. In that series, we talked about the common questions that we've encountered over the years to do with airbrushing. And of course, in the comments, uh, you guys gave us a bunch more. So in this video, we're going to address them. No doubt there's going to be more questions raised, which we'd love to address as well. So go ahead and put those in the comments on this, and we'll follow up on this one as well. If, let's say, I've got a 0.2 needle, mm. can I use that in a different type of nozzle, like a 0.4? How mm. does that work? Um, not unless you want me to come looking for you. So <laughs> um, generally speaking, generally speaking, with, uh, with all, all brands of airbrush, I think I'm safe in saying this, um, changing the needle size will necessitate also changing the nozzle size to the matched size. And in almost all brands, you will also need to change the air cap. Um, so typically these three things are matched. I'm trying to think of any brands where this is not the case. Um, and off the top of my head, I know that I know there there has been one or two, but off the top of my head, I, I can't think of them. But generally speaking, yeah, your your needle and your nozzle and your air cap will need to work together. So um, I know people kind of use change my needle size as a kind of a shorthand for changing the setup on the airbrush. I wish they wouldn't do that because it's kind of confusing to beginners. Um, it's changing the setup size is a is a better way to say it. So the needle always needs to be changed with the nozzle with the air cap. Um, sometimes also with the needle cap too, um, but typically it's, it's um, needle, nozzle, air cap all need to be changed and kept the same size together. Yeah. So for example, if you put, if you put a, a, let's say a 0.2 needle into a 0.4 nozzle, um, it'll paint, but the problem that you'll have is a 0.2 needle will, will protrude much further from a 0.2 nozzle and you'll get a load of tip dry on that. It'll be a bit of a nightmare to paint with. If you put a 0.4 needle in a 0.2 nozzle, it'll probably work, but you won't have the point at the correct distance out from the nozzle, so your detail capability from that smaller nozzle will probably be ruined. Um, so yeah, keep them matched up. Very important point. Can I use an airbrush to do makeup or temporary tattoos? Yeah, so um, it, this is something that's, that's um, really, really widely done now. So um, temporary tattoos, absolutely. It's a really fun application of the airbrush. Um, there's a lot of people who made a lot of money at festivals doing this. It's a really high pressure, uh, high pressure environment where you just got a queue of people and every person wants a temporary tattoo put down on them for, you know, five to 10 euros a pop. Um, it's incredibly lucrative if you if you want to go and subject yourself to 24 hours of extremely hard work but come away with it with a pretty good return. Um, temporary tattoos at festivals is a great way to achieve that. Um, makeup is a really interesting um, sector. So um, going back some years now, it was discovered that um, the technique of using an airbrush to apply makeup to stu studio personnel resulted in the same makeup lasting far, far longer than if it was applied um, in conventional ways. And the reason is, is because um, the makeup isn't kind of like pushed into the skin at all. It just sits, really sits on the surface. It gives a much more sheer appearance to the skin as well, which is much better at you know, making the person who's on the TV look their best. And so the next thing that happened with airbrush makeup was, of course, that when it's a bridal, because everybody wants to look great on that particular um, point, um, and then various companies, um, you know, have, have sort of forayed into uh, making um, airbrush makeup systems that you can use at home to prepare yourself, um, you know, for your day ahead. And the advantage of them generally is that it's kinder on the skin because um, you need less to achieve more. Uh, and the longevity of the application is, is generally better with the airbrush. So, yeah, it absolutely can be. Um, you tend to want to use um, specific airbrushes for that and specific makeup preparations for that. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty big sector of, of the airbrush nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. But what should I look for um, when I want to buy uh, different needle sizes, when I want to switch my needle sizes? Yeah, so the, the way that people typically tend to look at this, um, I, I find from the contact that I've had with people chatting at you know uh, conventions and whatnot, is um, people always talk in terms of detail. 
They always talk in terms of detail. Um, and, you know, like different sizes, like, you know, will a 0.2 give more detail than a 0.4? Yes. But it's not really, really, really about that. It's more about ease of use and control and speed. So let me just break that down a little bit. So um, ease of use, the bigger the size, the less fragile, the easier to live with, the less prone to clogging. Okay, so if you're starting out, for example, and you've got a choice between a 0.2 and a 0.4, I'm going to say to you probably go for the 0.4 because you don't have the experience or the ability quite just yet to exploit the capabilities of the 0.2. So a 0.4 is a great place to start for that. If you're finding that a lot of your airbrushing work is really all about, I want to get this stuff painted as fast as possible with the least amount of, um, you know, kind of uh, fuss, let's say, then probably, you know, the 0.4 is going to be really great for you. However, if you're looking at doing the same piece, but you want to have extreme control over how you're building color, how you're creating detail, how you're controlling hue, you know, the value of the color, having a slower setup. So how much paint comes out of the airbrush on any given trigger opening? Having a slower setup just makes that so much more pleasurable and so much less kind of, you know, stressful in terms of knowing the moment when you want to stop the application. You're kind of like painting in slow motion. That's a massive positive when you want to really control your color buildups, your detail buildups, how much of a highlight you want to put down. And in those instances, going for the smaller nozzle sizes, um, as I said before, like with air pressure, it's kind of like a gearbox on the airbrush. You know, if you're parking, you're trying to be really careful, you don't tend to park in fifth at 60 miles an hour. You know, you'd park in first at a crawling speed, and that's what a, a, small, um, a small nozzle size will give you. Yes, it will give you a little bit more extreme detail capability than a 0.4, let's say, but not as much as you might think. But where it really scores is in control and speed of delivery, just makes it easier to be great um, at, at your, uh, you know, what you're trying to do. So hopefully that covered a bunch of them, uh, but if you've got any more, please put them in the comments. Um, it's great when you do that because then we're actually answering what we know you want to know. So please go ahead and put your questions in the comments and we'll come back to this and deal with those in another video. Thanks so much. And don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps us to know that what we're doing is the stuff that you guys value. Thanks a lot.